Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and because my original video about how shitty quads, FPV mini quads were five years ago was shot in the airfield with only with the uh, handheld camera, the images were not super stable and I really want to show you how the quads were built in 2015, 2016, basically somewhere around that period because if we compare how mini quads are built right now with how they were built back then you will notice that there is really a lot of differences so for most probably for the people who were flying fpv five six years ago this is nothing super fancy but the new joiners might be surprised how things were done back then first of all the size this is the typical back then typical five inch frame called the zmr 250 so it's 250 millimeters motor to motor Right now, nobody flies 250, everybody flies smaller ones. Look how big the frame itself, how wide it is and how much space, even for the five incher, there is still between the propellers because this frame can accept a six inch propellers. Like barely, barely, they will barely fit, but yes, you can fit six inch props into the five inch quad. Yeah, crazy, right? Then, comparing the size of the frame with, let's say, a modern 5-incher, not the small one, this is not the small quad, the Purx 5 is not definitely small. But see, how shorter, big for the modern standard squad is comparing to ZMR 250, you see, how wider the ZMR 250 is, and also how wider the central plate is. There is like, I don't know, maybe even quarter of the inch just of the wideness of the bottom and the top deck only because, well, nobody really knows why those things were so wide over here. On top of that, the frame is built arms are three millimeters and uh, carbon but you also were able to buy three millimeters glass fiber now imagine how glass fiber was breaking and even though this is a carbon fiber those three millimeters arms were breaking like crazy long wide big heavy also uh, and just see how tall the stands standoffs are over here one more time if we compare this with the relatively modern frame there is much more space inside oh, look, look, here in the front mostly air in the middle mostly air and only back section is filled because uh, in my build the back section fits the vtx and uh, receiver let me open the top plate oh and this is amazing um you see this plate on the rubber stands off and that it's supposed to act as a damper. This is the place to install the camera. Back then we were using an HD cameras like for example a uh, Runcam. That was called Runcam HD, I think. And the idea was you were installing this thing flat in the in the front. Of course, flat. Uh, not raised, so flat and usually when you were flying you were only recording the ground. Nothing, absolutely nothing else. So now let me let me remove the top plate and let's see how this thing is built inside. Okay, all the screws removed, so let's remove the top plate. And in my case, the top plate also holds the VTX. The VTX I have over here is also something that is like dated to 2015. This is Boss. 800. Yes, it has 800 milliwatts. However, comparing to the modern 800 milliwatts, uh, this the range of this thing is extremely limited. It has the indicator of the band and the channel, and there is no raise band. This is from the times when there were there was still no raise band, and for example, band E, the frequency was going high then down, like crazy stuff, and. Um, I don't think there is nothing more interesting about the VTX itself besides the fact that, of course, back then, no smart audio, no uh, Trump protocol, absolutely nothing like that. Then, you see this thing huge over here. Now, this is, of course, the receiver. Um, before came the era of the relatively and very small receivers, like, for example, I have the Ghost Atto over here. 
which is a super small PCB that is taking like I don't know how much of a fraction of this of this thing over here. Um, it was either X8R or X4R. Well, X4R was of course smaller, but still comparing to this thing like four times as big. But if you do not have anything better, you do have to stick with something like that. Still, in my opinion, the X8R is was a pretty good receiver with the I was trusting those receivers because somehow of the of the size. Now, uh, flight controller, nothing super fancy. This is just uh, SP Racing F3 in the Acro version. And if you look closely, you should see that the bottom plate is a PCB. Uh, yes, you actually were able to solder wires directly into the bottom plate and then either use pins uh, to directly connect your PCB with the flight controller or even install the 2.4 millimeter tenth of the inch uh, sockets install pins into the flight controller and just plug it in into the PCB. In theory it was the great idea I had it I had it once but at the longer run it was just abysmal idea because those controllers at one point were losing connectivity and the quad was just falling from the sky everything was like separating so no 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 that was really bad so i did it in a slightly more modern way i just soldered the short wires between the flight controller and the pdbs and installed everything with the nylon stand-up so it holds it holds in place and there is no danger of really like being Damage. But of course, you can see over here that the uh, wire to the ESC is wired to the PDB and then the PDB PCB. And then there is a separate wire from the bottom plate to the flight controller. Also, the same goes for the, for example, for the signal from the camera, uh, because um, the wire to the VTX is installed, is soldered to the and to the board then it goes to the front because here uh, i have the micro minim osd osd connected via the serial port to the flight controller which renders the osd there is also an option to install this thing using the pins uh, over here above the buzzer because the buzzer one more time integrated into the whole and uh, whole thing uh, with the connectors but one more time no i don't want to do it because every time there is something wrong with that approach and just installing with wires uh, is a better idea but of course look the camera camera wire is soldered to the uh, bottom plate then from the bottom plate it goes to the OSD from the OSD back to the bottom plate the bottom plate transfer the signal to the VTX and then everything goes something that you were rather not seeing in the 2015-2016 are the TPU printed parts um I had a printer back then I think in 2016 I got my first 3D printer, but the TPU was not a thing. However, I was not really able to find any camera that was really like from that era, like the PCB camera with the standard, standard back then uh, installation that you had to use a zip ties or some kind of wood to really like tilt it. And like I said, I don't want to do it like that. I just installed the oldest camera I was able to find. Uh, something interesting. Look, uh, cameras back then, had the connectors in the bottom uh, but then at one point someone discovered that if you are tilting camera even higher and higher uh, to fly faster and to do more tricks uh, the bottom installed connector for the camera is a problem because it interacts with the bottom plate and it's just better to install the connector on the top in the beginning the connectors were on the bottom and now we go to the ESCs and the motor. ESCs just with the electrical tape and secured in place with uh, some zip ties. Those are, one more time, not fully up to date to the rest of the quad ESCs because I was not able to find anything like 16 amps uh, with the Simon K. It's just like 
you cannot buy it and uh, also it was hard for me to find a good source for four not broken Simon K16 amps. So I just installed the oldest ESCs I had on my in any of my drawers, which are FVT little bees, I think 30 amp version. This thing is so old that although it has the BL heli, it's not working with even with the multi shot. Don't even get me started about the D shot, even the multi shot on those things is not operational. So your option was to use one shot 125 or the standard. I was not going with standard and I have it configured with the Betaflight 2.3.5 I think, but on the ESCs I have disabled the braking because the ESCs from the era had no braking. What does it mean? When the motor was accelerating of course there was extra force from the from the motor to start it spinning faster but if the motor were ordered to slow down there was no active braking of the motor and to slow down it just had to lose all of its energy and due to the drag and the generation on the lift that meant that increasing the rotation increasing the thrust was relatively fast more like it's fast right now although the lower of the RPM was kind of the longish process. If you start this thing and then cut off the voltage, like cut off the power, it will still like rotate for a second or two before it really stops. And this, by the way, is main one of the main reasons that back then quads were really flying like shit. Dumped light, uh, when it appeared, was really probably one of the most important improvements in the ESC technology. Dumped light as the possibility for the ESC to break the motor, to slow it down, not only to accelerate it. Because thanks to that, the tuning was much simpler and the quads were able to fly with the higher gains, more D, more P and just better locked in feeling uh, in the sticks. If you go back to my first video, and to watch the DVR footage, you will notice that all the time it's in a state of the wobble. Why? Because when there was an order for the ESC to move it to one side, to increase the thrust on one side, it was doing this rapidly, but then when the flight controller wanted to stop the movement, the stopping of the movement was taking a long time because the motor had to slow down naturally. And I think this is all super interesting. Oh, of course, the classic motors. Uh, classic motors, those are Emax RS2205 race spec, not the RS2205. 2205S, but the first generation of the red bottoms. Motors like motors, even for modern standards, you can happily fly with them. However, take a look at that. Those, this nut uh, is silver and this one is gold. Because to unscrew the silver nut, you just unscrew it counterclockwise, but if you will want to unscrew the black nut, because the this uh, uh, this motor has the counterclockwise thread on the on the shaft. You have to unscrew it to the right side. Why we were doing that? Um, I think the idea was that uh, the nuts would not go off because the torque on the motor were always tightening them because the silver ones were supposed to spin always uh, counterclockwise and the black one were supposed to spin clockwise. Uh, so the, the, the dots were always tightening by themselves. However, to think about it, if you have self-locking nut with the nylon insert, then the, the nut will not go off by itself. It's just impossible to happen. So, and the idea of having different threads on uh, counterclockwise and the clockwise rotating motors died. It's so good. And of course the props. Mm, the props are dull prop dull indestructible fi 50 50 40 5 inches diameter 4 inches 
Peach and back then they were really like the next best thing to think to the slice bread. Everybody was wanted to fly those propellers because unlike some other propellers they were not breaking super easily and they were delivering kind of nice thrust. This was probably really the last popular generation of the two bladed propellers. Right after the indestructible Dals 5040 uh, we had three bladed props and the three bladed props stayed with us until now. Of course uh, if we add the short adventure with the four bladed, five bladed, I think I even saw six bladed propeller ones. It makes absolutely no sense but well if anybody wants to do something stupid why not. Oh and let me show you one more thing. This frame and this PCB has integrated lights uh, and this is amazing. Let me power. Okay. It will be beeping, and you see, there is a switch. Ta da! You turn on the switch, and the LEDs are on. Red ones on the back, and the white ones on the front. Okay. Let me discover, disconnect that. However, I lost one LED over here, and this side is not illuminated white, but still. <sighs> this, you might even call it that this was the state of the art almost state of not the state the most popular configuration of the racing or the freestyle mini quad in the 2015 uh, maybe even first half of the 2016 luckily better solutions came later and we no longer have to use this abomination of the quad okay I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, thank you for allowing me to take you to take back in time to the times where the FPV was still something brand new and everybody was, whoa, you can see where you are flying. This is so amazing. So thanks for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.